Hey, what's up? It's Aaron. Welcome back to the Cash PG Lunch Hour podcast. I'm your host, and today I got a special episode for you. Um, I want to talk about the questions you need to ask your patients and the questions that you need to ask your patients that are going to allow them to feel comfortable paying you cash for physical therapy, whether you have a cash practice, a hybrid practice, an in-network practice. You should be asking these questions. Let me give you a little bit of background. Um, I was asking different questions a while back, and I got to a point in my business where I realized, like, I've already I've raised my rates, but I wasn't given initially um, when I started my business ten years ago. I wasn't I was you went I worked with a coach, but I wasn't really coached on setting my rates. It was more like determine your rates, and I based on what I had been doing in massage, but I wasn't basing them on physical therapy and what physical therapy did. And so I look back, and I was I was telling one of my coaching clients today, if, when I look back over the last ten years, if I was charging what I charge now when I started without ever raising my rates, I would have an extra million dollars in my bank account. So if you want to make sure that you're not leaving money on the table. You're not losing lost income or potential future lost income. And you want to figure out how do we have a conversation with patients so that we all feel really good about this financial arrangement, that we're not upsetting anyone by raising our rates, or we're not hard selling, or we don't feel like yucky, or we don't feel like we're being unethical by charging money for physical therapy, then you need to continue listening to this episode. And so I got to a point in my business a few years ago where I'd hired a physical therapist and started working with a new bookkeeper and I was able to get really good breakdowns. And I was looking at it and going, all right, you know, I've got more time now. We're seeing more patients, but my clinic isn't profitable. So the clinic was certainly paying for some things. Like I was paying a salary and getting some health insurance and um, health insurance for employees and benefits for them. But at, on the line item, on the books, the clinic's not profitable and the business should be profitable. Because if you're not profitable, like what, what are you doing? You can't continue to serve patients for long if you're not profitable. And you know, at the time when I looked at that, like I had another business, a coaching, consulting, and mentoring business. So between the two of those things, like I can live and eat. But business one has to be profitable to be considered um, successful and like, hey, I'm an entrepreneur if I have a business, not a owning my own job. And so I realized then that I needed to raise my rates and I needed to raise them significantly. But how was I going to raise them significantly if I did it the same way I had been doing it all along? So I decided I had to flip the script, I had to figure something else out. And I realized, hey, you know, I've been selling coaches and coaching and courses um, in a different way than I'm selling physical therapy. Because it's not like I, you've been listening to me for a while. It's not physical therapy isn't what we're selling. You know, I've learned a lot of things in from my from my two businesses that feed each other. So for instance, referrals, like my clinic runs on automated word of mouth referrals. And I realized I need to do that in my coaching and consulting business. So while we're on the topic, if you have any friends who need to listen to this podcast, please don't hesitate to share this with them. But I wasn't doing that in one. So I do things in two different businesses, in two different industries um, that feed each other. I also, I've learned a lot of things from personal trainers. So shout out to personal trainers. Um, shout out to Bedros Cooley and my coach who I started following 12, 13 years ago. Learned some amazing things from, from outside the industry. And that's what I'm going to bring to you today. It's like, so... I had to flip it because I learned sales from outside. The, I learned sales. I worked with a guy who was the number one auto sales uh, person in the whole state of Texas. Maybe it was just for a Nissan. But I worked with him for four months learning sales and sales training. And I decided that I specifically need to adapt that for physical therapy um, so that I could enroll people into a plan of care that would actually help them. Rather than sell them three or four visits of physical therapy and they get some better, I want people to understand this is what they need. Like, you know, so we've all struggled with 
um, patient retention, we call it compliance. Uh, so three or four visits, yeah, I feel some better. I don't need to come back in. If you've ever had that happen, this is an important, this is a vital episode for you. Um, and I hope you get a ton out of this um, training. And I will also, at the end, I'll tell you where to get um, a handout that I have made for you and a PDF that you can download that's got some scripts and some questions that you're going to use um, to work with your patients. Um, because it's vital to ask the right questions and it's vital to understand that you're not selling a commodity. So we cannot commoditize physical therapy or the treatment techniques you're doing or using. Physical therapy and the treatment techniques you are using is how you're going to give people the result that they want. But we have to ask the right questions to understand what it is that they really want. And they don't want, um, they, they don't want your treatment techniques. They don't want more range of motion. They don't necessarily want less pain. They don't want uh, your degree or your certifications. What they want is to feel confident and independent so that they can be strong and they can be a good example for their daughter or they can you know, feel, um, have a release of their anxiety you know, because with anxiety, they're not a good parent and they want to be a good parent. They want a good partner. They want a lot more than the level at which we're talking to and the level at which you were taught to ask them in PT school um, or any other uh, training you've had, likely. It's, it's like we need to know exactly why they want to be there and why it's important to them and what that means to them. There's multiple layers. If you want to go back and listen to a great episode, I did where I interviewed Jacob Campos, who's my digital marketing specialist. He talked about the seven whys, and it's amazing. I was like, holy cow, Jake, we never talked about that. So after this episode's done, you wanna go back and do some more sales training, go listen to that episode, the episode with Vince Del Monte and the episode with Jason Maxwell are all great videos um, regarding sales. Because we have to learn sales, because it's your ethical obligation to sell people into a full plan of care so they can get what they need and what you know you can do for them. Because how many times have you talked to a patient who you knew you could help, but they weren't ready to help you? It's because we can't always tell them what to do, but we can ask them questions to get them to come to that decision themselves. So I was recently up in Toronto speaking at Accelerate Live. Um, the guys from Call Hero, Rick Lau, uh, Sanjeev Bhatia, Alan, um, Kareem, Daryl Yardley. Those guys had me up there to come speak to the 250 Canadian physio business owners. And I got up there and I gave a talk very much like what I'm gonna share with you today. Why it's important, what value you hold for people, and how to raise your rates. So raising your rates isn't the hard part, it's making decisions the hard part, speaking about it in the right way. Okay, the real trick, trick to raising your rates is you don't, if you raise your rates significantly enough, you don't need to raise them on everyone. You cycle people off their plan of care and all new people have the new rate. Make sense? No one gets upset. No one knows any different. Someone comes back in years later, you, you sell them in the new way, you charge them the new rate, and they won't care. We've had it happen in our business. So I got up there and spoke to them. And if you're a Canadian, like maybe you get this better than I did, but I was surprised. And, and these guys wanted me up there because they wanted people in Canada to realize this, is that you know they're up there, you know whether it's the government or private insurance, it's much more simple and they're under less pressure and stress than we are here in the United States uh, for re insurance reimbursement. They, they basically get it, they just don't get a lot of it and so they're operating within this small window of, oh, our patients only get X amount of visits so I don't wanna waste their visits or use all their visits or they only get X dollars so let's don't use it. So I give my talk for 30 minutes and I'm like, this is why you need to raise your rates. This is how you raise your rates. This is what we're doing and this is what works. And here's some examples of other people who've done the exact same thing. And I did that and I, I felt like it was, it was pretty good. You know, as I'm talking, um, it was hard to gauge the crowd, but you know, like I've spoken here in the United States and I can get the feedback. And so whether it's a cultural thing or it's just like they're in a different place than we are, or my, you know, my lack of understanding, you know, it was hard, but I got a lot of feedback afterwards from people personally, one-on-one. -on -one. So the next day, here's an interesting thing. The next day, there was a contest. All the speakers and sponsors had 60 seconds to get up there and pitch to these 250 physio business owners how 
I'm gonna help you generate $10,000 more next month. Okay, so um, I didn't see a lot of them go. I was um, actually upstairs working with the, the engineer and giving him some feedback and waiting to give a testimonial and I missed my early slot and they slid me in at the end. Um, and a lot of guys were saying, oh, you need to do this, this, the speaker said this. Well, they were rating all these from one to five and I got up there and I said, raise your hand if your business does more than 50 patient visits per week and over half the room raised their hand. Okay, so half the room, they've got, you know, a lot of these guys have bigger businesses. They've got multi-disciplinary um, businesses with chiros, acupuncture, massage, physio, all in their multi-physio businesses. Um, over half the room raised their hand. Over half the room is doing 50 visits or more per week. And that's where I stopped. Remember, I had 60 seconds. I said, okay, if you all raise your rates $25 a visit in three months, you'll have generated 15,000 extra dollars Okay, so not just 10,000, the goal is to get into 10,000, so it's $25 a visit, it's $15,000. That's $25 times 50 times 12 is 15,000. And I turned to walk off the stage and Kareem goes, Aaron, you've got 35 or 40 seconds left. And I was like, well, what else is there to say? I just did a talk yesterday on how to raise your rates, because the talk was how to raise your rates every year without upsetting your patients. And I looked out and I was like, okay, raise your hand here if you feel comfortable raising your rates. Or you're gonna, or as if you, I said, raise your hand here if you're gonna raise your rates on Monday, because this was a Friday afternoon. And six people's hands went up. And I was, I was actually really shocked because all they had to do is call and say, hey, we're changing the fee schedule. Like, and I didn't say change it to what we're charging. I said, just change it, change it a significant amount. So then I said, okay, who here feels comfortable raising the rates $11 a visit on Monday? And six hands went up. And I was like, really? And I said, okay, who here feels comfortable raising the rates $6 per visit? And the same six hands go up. And I was just, I was shocked. I was just like, you've got to, I didn't say anything. I was like, all right. <laughs> and I said to them, I said, look, just so you know the math, if, you rate, if you're seeing 25 visits a week and you raise your rates in 48 weeks out of the year, you're going to generate at least an extra $6,000 next year. And it's just like, we're talking about like five bucks, a $6, no, you know, $6 is like more of a pricing strategy rather than like, what I say is like, you know, if you're charging 80, don't just charge 85, charge 86. You make an extra, you know, a couple hundred bucks, a couple thousand dollars over time. Um, if you're going to charge 86, I'd rather say charge 88. <laughs> um, it's the same reason you don't buy shirt t-shirts for twenty dollars at target or walmart you buy them for 19.99 so here's what i want you to know you absolutely provide a service and treatment and transformation for your patients that they cannot get anywhere else that they're not getting where it's a better value but explaining the value to people and how you may be cheaper than the other option is the wrong conversation okay that's very analytical that's too analytical it, it, it starts to, we're starting down the wrong road. It's people don't make um, analytical decisions about their health, they make emotional decisions. So what you need to do is set up a system where you're able to start asking patients some of these same questions a couple different times. So maybe it's on an application to get into a free visit. It's on the phone in your intake forms and in the free visit slash evaluation. So what I want to do is I'm going to talk to you about how you can convince your patients to forego their insurance and pay cash even $200 a visit or more, $250, $350. I know people who are doing $450 a visit, if not more. Um, I'm going to help you understand the best questions you need to ask to find out really why your patients want physical therapy and why they want it from you. And what do you need to say on the phone and in person to get them scheduled? And, and even people who have great insurance. And how about some objections? So it's important to understand and learn and it's your ethical obligation to learn how to sell physical therapy. But think about this. Don't think about it as sales and selling. Think about it as enrolling them in a plan of care. And that's really all you're going to do is learn how to get patients to agree to enroll them in a plan of care. Because the, the only way for you to know what they really want and what activities are important to them is to ask the right questions. 
This is uh, called permission-based selling. And we're asking them permission to ask questions and we're giving the patients the lead without letting them steer the conversation. So we, we give them the lead, but we steer the conversation but, and we're asking them for permission. So the, it's the difference between, you know, what's your date of birth and what's your insurance? which is usually what you'll be asked when you go to see the physician's office versus um, hi I'm ask your name and you know how can I help you my name is Dr. LeBauer oh well I'm looking for physical therapy well great what are you calling <laughs> you know like like how'd you hear about us you know why is this important to you sometimes patients aren't going to be used to being asked such intimate questions by a healthcare provider um, and they may not know exactly how to answer that or even sometimes they might be a little put off and that's okay just be patient with them, restate the questions, maybe in a little bit different way, and um, even give them an example about your own body or someone else, or here's why I'm asking. Because a lot of times people say, no, I just want you to get rid of pain. Well, look, Miss Jones, uh, I totally get it. I, I wanna help you get rid of the pain too. But there's a lot of different options for pain. You can go take, take pills, you can get an injection, you can get surgery, you can go get some insoles, you can get some tape. You can get some creams, some Tiger Balm, you, know, you can go see the massage therapist. So why is it that you've chosen to come see us or what's your expectation of how we can help you? Um, so some of the top five questions we ask our patients during our first interaction with them, and these are questions that help us truly understand what result is most important to them. And these are the questions that ease, allow us to easily sell paid and full plans of care of $2,000 and more even when the patients have great insurance and they could go somewhere else for a $20 copay. I'm gonna start with a few softball questions. Like these are to get some rapport. It's like, hey, did you find our office okay? Like, so when I sit a patient down, I'll say, hey, Ms. Jones, did you find our office okay? You know, it's like, you know, how about the, how about the Raptors and Warriors game? You know, you might throw out, you know, just something to, you know, kind of create some, create some rapport and, and some uh, break the ice and, and, and build a little trust. Okay, how did you hear about us? You know, we may have even already asked this before, but I want to talk about like, and what's really important to me as a therapist, as well as a business owner is, how did people find us? Who did they hear about us from? And now what conversation do I need to have? Did they find us on Google? Did they hear about us through our patient, Rob, who sent us 35 people over the last three years, you know? Or did they find us through um, word of mouth? Were they, you know, uh, another patient's spouse who they're like, oh, my spouse wants me to come in. I'm not sure why I'm here. Like, so that'll direct the conversation. So Mr. Jones, what brings you in today? What's your biggest concern? I need to give them an open-ended question. Give them a chance to explain what's going on in their own words. Um, typically, most people um, go to see a healthcare provider. They're not given this opportunity. And getting this information can give you a ton of, um, of clues and ideas and information about what is actually going on. Because my dad's mentor, Eugene Stead, I never actually met this guy, I've heard this enough from my dad. It's one of his quotes um, in his little blue book is, the doctor will get the diagnosis when they listen to the patient. There's another variation of it is the patient will give the diagnosis if you only just spend a few minutes listening to them. It's like, I should listen to a patient and confirm the diagnosis with my tests. Not, let's send the patient to get an MRI to know what's going on. It should be the other way. I should use any of my special tests, any of my, anything for MRIs, x-rays, to confirm what I think is going on or to rule out some uh, red flags. So I need to ask questions about what's going on. Another great question I want to know from people early on is, Mr. Jones, Ms. Jones, what do you need to know from me today to feel confident about your decision working with us? Sometimes people come in, they know they want to work and they just need, they just need to know the price. Okay, great. Um, but I might not tell them right away. Um, I'll say, great, okay, I can totally do that. Let me get some more information from you first because I want to craft an offer. They might say, I just need to know if there's any hope <laughs> or if you can help me. And it's something as easy as my, my so-and-so told me never to lift more than 35 pounds again. And I'm like, well, can you squat without weight? And you're like, yeah, does it hurt? No. Okay, but when I bend over forward, my back hurts. Okay, great. I'm starting to get an idea. It's probably a hip hinging problem. All I gotta do is fix that. Yeah, Mr. Jones, I've seen this before. 
I see this all the time. I'm curious, why are you here today versus coming in six weeks ago or even six months ago when this first started? You know, so what's what's coming up now? Like what's what's so important to them that they do something about it now? Like if I know that information, it's great. So those are five big questions. Okay, here's some bonus questions. Imagine, Mr. Jones, imagine we're having this conversation a year from now, even three years from now. Looking back over that time, what has to happen in your life for you to feel happy with your progress? It's like, I'm not even asking for you to feel like, like major miracle happens. It's just like, what, hap- what's ha- what makes you happy? What makes you satisfied? Like, what is the outcome that you need to get to for you to feel happy? And they might say, I need to go on this trip without worrying that I'm going to do more damage to my knee. Great. I can absolutely help you do that. This question assumes that we're working together. It gets them thinking in the future about what re- that result they would get will be like with us as partners, with us working together. Then it asks them to think backwards from the place in the future where they're happy to over time so they can tell you exactly what results and goals are important to them. What question do you have for me now? Instead of a yes or no statement like, do you have another question or do you have any questions? This statement assumes that they do have a question and it gives them permission to ask it. Mr. Jones, what question do you have for me? What question do you have for me at this time? If you get an objection, after you offer your solution or treatment plan or price, such as, wow, that's expensive, I need to check my insurance, or I need to check with my spouse, here's how you handle objections. You acknowledge the objection. You don't have to agree with the objection, but you acknowledge it. You know what, I'm, Mr. Jones, I'm going to make it work. Mr. Jones, I understand. Mr. Jones, I agree. It is expensive. Mr. Jones, I agree. Like, So you acknowledge the objection. They just want to be heard. Some people are trying to test you. Some people have an objection. And then what you do is you redirect. Or you saying, you know, obviously I've done a poor job of explaining how we can help. What question or concern do you have for me that I haven't answered for you yet? And they say, well... You know, I just don't know if it's going to work. Or, you know, well, you know, my what if my insurance doesn't cover it? Well, Mr. Jones, if what if your insurance doesn't cover it? Whatever it is, like you handle the objection. People say it's expensive. You'll say, great, yeah, I know it's expensive. And compared to what you told me, like I think we're going to make uh, progress in the next few weeks. So you told me you need to go out of town or you can't work, or you take what you've got from them and you compare it to what they said. Like, so, you know, it, it is, but how much longer are you willing to wait? It is expensive, and um, if we get going right away, then we're going to get you feeling better as soon as next week. So how about, Mr. Jones, we go ahead and get started with the plan today? So you don't even have to super handle the objection or salesman slick it. You just have to acknowledge it Say, look, it is, and compared to you struggling for six months doing these other therapies, why don't we give it a shot and get you some results? And you ask for the sale again, and a lot of times they'll think, okay, great. Just because people give you objection doesn't mean that it's a no. It means that you haven't explained the value enough, they have a lingering question, or that um, they just don't understand the value in what you've provided. But generally at this point, we have very few objections. But is, is there a question or concern or something that I've missed? Okay. So we, you guys, are you guys following me this far? So right now, that what that is, is um, just the tip of the iceberg for you of some of the questions you need to ask. And the whole idea is to figure out why people want to be there. And then you can create a offer for them to enroll in your plan of care, which will allow them to get the results that they just told you you want. You ask them permission to ask questions. You repeat what they've said. Say, Mr. Jones, just so I understand, you want to be able to go back to CrossFit so you feel strong and confident. So that, you know, why strong and confident? Why are you being strong and confident? Because it'll be, I'll feel healthy. Why is feeling healthy 
important to you because I'll be able to set a good example for my kids and I'll be a good role model for my, my daughter. I'll be able to run away from someone or you know, jump over a fence if I need to. You know, I'll be able to dance at my daughter's wedding coming up in three weeks. And then I create an offer here. Well, because you told me this, my recommendation is we get you into our treatment program so you can feel strong and confident and run as much as possible without fearing that the arthritis is gonna to continue to break down your knees and you might do some permanent damage. How does that sound? So if you, there, or there you have it. Those are the top five and really eight questions all successful physical therapy practice owners ask to get their patients to pay cash for physical therapy. This is just a, a tip of the iceberg when it comes to getting patients to agree to see you for PT, even though you don't take their insurance. There's so much more we can go over, um, but we don't have as much time today. So what I want to do is tell you how you can get this script and get some of these questions so you can start working on them yourself in your own business and growing your business and getting more patients to enroll in your plans of care. So all you have to do, and I will post this link on our show notes page, but go to cashptmarketing.com forward slash five dash questions. Okay, that's cashptmarketing.com forward slash five dash questions. You go there, you're going to be able to download a free PDF from me titled The Only Five Questions Successful PT Practice Owners Ask to Get Their Patients to Pay Cash for Physical Therapy. You're going to get um, a free download with these exact questions and scripts. And you'll also get a few follow-up emails from me with some more information and some more training on how you can get more patients to enroll in your full-priced, paid-in-full cash-based physical therapy plan of care. Thank you very much. This is Aaron LeBauer with the Cash PT Lunch Hour. Dream big and go all in, and I'll see you on the next show. Thanks so much.